In order to lose fat, you have to do cardio. I believed this for a long time. I went on runs, I played hours upon hours of football, rugby, cricket, what have you, but the layer of fat that coated my body, my polar bear suit, never seemed to leave me. My friend would hardly do anything, but he never gained any weight. Both of us were at a loss. We chalked it off to a difference in metabolism. Now with a lot more experience, I can say that this was not actually a coincidence. With that said, let's get into the smartest way to do cardio in 2023. All right, guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about cardio and how best to use cardio depending on your goals. The first thing that I want to make clear is what is cardio? Cardio just stands for cardiovascular exercise, which essentially means exercises that boost your heart rate and improve your blood circulation. Does that sound like a good idea? Hell yes, because blood circulation is literally at the root of health. Blood is what carries nutrients to our body. It's what carries oxygen to our muscles. Lack of blood circulation to the brain for any more than 20 seconds, you're likely paralyzed or slept or dead. Things like feeling energetic, speed of recovery, your general stress level, even the quality of your boner, like everything to do with health is to do with blood circulation and cardiovascular exercise that increases our heart rate, that puts our muscles through stress. All of this is very, very bad beneficial for our health. So if you ask me, should you do cardio? I would say number one for health reasons. Yes. Here's another reason to do cardio. Do you want to be the guy that pumps iron in the gym, grunts around like a fat gym bro. And then when he has to actually run for more than two minutes, he's super out of breath. When he goes on a date with a girl and somehow there's like a hill that they have to walk past 30 steps in heavy breath. He's trying to hide his heavy breath, you know, and he's out of breath, just walking up a hill. Okay. Okay, or maybe someone snatches your mother's handbag and you need to catch that guy down the road, but you're so damn slow and out of breath that you cannot do that. Who wants to be that guy? I bet you in today's world, there are a lot of guys like this. A lot of guys who for all their efforts in the gym are not functional, are not able to put their bodies through some form of cardio movements, which is really what's necessary. And this brings me on to a slightly deeper point, which is a way that I like to think about a lot of health related issues is you want to ask this one simple question. What did our ancestors do? I don't mean our ancestors from like 200 years ago, the Victorian times. I mean like the caveman ancestors. What did they do? Not because, you know, those ancient times were like morally good or anything. This is not a moral question. It's just to say our bodies evolved to best survive in the environment that we had. Our bodies evolved to optimize for our surroundings. You have 10 fingers because it was better than having nine fingers. You know, in most cases we evolved like that. We have eyes because the people with eyes could survive better in the wild. And it's the same way our dietary system, the cardiovascular system, what we do to best optimize for health and longevity and life expectancy. We can just ask the simple question, like what did our ancestors do? The caveman probably did cardio as a natural thing in his daily life, okay, because he was required to do so. And actually a lot of modern diseases and these kinds of issues, anxiety, mental health issues, they are in some ways a result of being too far away from our natural state of being. So guys, those are the two main reasons why you want to be doing cardio. It is healthy and it is functional. Now let's talk about cardio in relation to weight loss. When it comes to weight loss, it's a bit of a curveball. It's a weird one and I'll explain why. Cardio that we normally think about in the form of football, jiu-jitsu, running, horse riding, climbing, fencing, all of these things that boost our heart rate. What does that actually do? It creates what's called stress, what's called lactic acid in our muscles. When your muscles feel tired, it means they don't have enough oxygen and so your breath goes up and down. <laughs> to pump more oxygen and lactic acid builds up, which is the stress and the fatigue that you feel. Lactic acid and stress leads to excess cortisol production, which is the stress hormone. And cortisol leads to high blood sugar. What does high blood sugar do? It leads to the release of insulin, which is one of the most evil hormones for weight loss. It's actually a very, very healthy, necessary hormone for our body's um, regulation of blood sugar. But it is actually not that great for us when it's combined with cortisol and we want to lose weight. Because what insulin does is it makes us want to binge eat. It makes us feel less full in the moment of eating it. Why? Because leptin, another hormone which tells our brain you're full, is inhibited from signaling to the brain by the 
insulin okay getting a little complicated into this hormone science and stuff but basically all that to say you get huge hunger spikes and you feel less full in the moment that you're eating it then there is the psychological side so what i just explained is if you like the the chemical physical side of why cardio leads to you eating more but the psychological side see if you resonate with this you do a bunch of cardio you went on an hour's run or you did two hours of football with your friends you sit in front of the food you can eat like a cow i mean but the psychological process is a bit like you know what i did a lot of exercise i did two hours i was sweating a lot that was a lot i feel tired i drained myself i probably burnt like 2000 calories i can eat a bit more this compensation effect is what happens you sort of you compensate for all that exercise that you did by rewarding yourself by eating more but little did you know because you probably didn't do any research that the hour of running that you did as opposed to the hour of walking that you did only burnt 300 to 400 calories more than the walking did but notice the difference in hunger if you did a one hour walk versus a one hour run in the second case when on a run you are able to eat so much plus you think you deserve it plus you have this hunger spike so you end up having extra bowl of rice extra bowl of kimchi get extra bowl of pot noodles boom 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 they stack up and you end up eating way more than 300 calories whereas if you went on a very steady state or low intensity cardio like walking you wouldn't have that hunger spike you wouldn't have the cortisol and insulin spike and you wouldn't have that huge compensation effect thinking you deserve to eat that much more so you're likely to be able to stay in a caloric deficit much easier that's why when it comes to weight loss this dual process of the chemical hormonal reaction that makes you binge eat plus the psychological reaction of you feeling like you deserve to eat more this this dual process is what happens when you do high intensity cardio which catches people in this loop they are like this is the loop i was in high school it's like i did a lot of exercise i can eat a bit more but i end up eating more than i exercise and then you're like i need to do cardio more cardio to do weight loss and it's like i'm trying so hard yet why am i not losing weight it's always there the belly i do so much exercise but it's always there i get messages like this you know about people in in college football in lacrosse and they say to me hey one he look i'm in the sports team i'm doing all this thing but i can't get rid of both so this is why that happens and now one of the things that you have to realize is what do you do do you just stop doing cardio do you do cardio well here's the thing there's no right or wrong answer again it depends on your goals if you're super focused on losing weight and getting lean is it a good idea to actually cut out high intensity cardio and focus on things like walking and weight training absolutely that's what i do when i want to get into a super lean shape for summer or something like that but that's not the end of life i love sports i love football i love jujitsu i love tennis whatever sport you throw at me i want to do it it's so fun and having fun bringing health and functionality with dynamic movements you know actually doing enjoyable sports with teammates and friends this is such a big part of a holistic life not to mention all the health benefits that we discussed at the beginning of this video. you do not want to cut cardio out of your life so you want to somehow find a harmonious balance with cardio and weight training the way i do it currently is i do jujitsu two to three times a week with weight training three times a week and i try to go on walks as much as possible that's the way i do it now the honest truth is that this in terms of the minimalist training principles that i preach is even a bit too much because jujitsu is like i said very high intensity it leaves you with huge hunger spikes massive energy expenditure and it's easy to get burnt out if you do you know six days a week cardio slash weight training i would actually say the optimal for a lot of people would be to do cardio once a week some kind of high intensity cardio once a week whether it's boxing or tennis with your friends and then three times of resistance training or weight training but of course depending on how much you love cardio how much you actually care about health and functionality much more than being strong and, and lean you could obviously increase cardio and reduce a bit of the workouts that you do okay and the last thing that i'll say is some of you might be thinking but what about these like ufc fighters what about these like boxers they are like strong athletic they look good and they're lean and they do cardio every day that's exactly my point i mean they can do it because they're professional athletes who literally spend their whole life optimized towards 
you know expending energy and becoming better at that skill their whole life is so high activity that their natural caloric burn is so high so it's hard for them to actually eat a lot like michael phelps if he's doing you know hundred or thousand laps in the in the swimming pool he can eat like 10 big mac meals he, he's still at a caloric deficit right so you're not a, a, an olympic athlete or a wbc boxing champion it's probably not a good idea for you to rely on cardio as a method of weight loss but like i said guys cardio still has a huge role to play in terms of health and functionality all right so i hope that video helped and it's really not a cookie cutter one size fits all solution it's about your goals and how you can design your life in a holistic way and how to incorporate cardio that fits your goals hope that helped guys see you in the next video the day of eating pretty much the same thing salad with four eggs balsamic vinegar i got one of these olive oil spray things drizzling olive oil uncontrollably you get this glug glug and then that's like 150 extra calories that you didn't control so if you get those sprays then you can coat it still get that fat taste still get that olive oil taste without overdoing the calories. It's just these little things, they add up, so. I've actually said this a bunch of times, but if you're trying to lose weight, it's a very good idea to go low carb, especially for the first meal of the day. Because carbs, even though they make you feel full in the moment of eating them. They also don't keep you full as long as protein. And when you start eating carbs, it's kind of like a dopamine spike. It's kind of like, um, an, has a numbing effect on your palate, which makes you able to eat more and more and more and more. A more accurate expression would be, has a numbing effect on your satiety signaling. That's why you can eat bowls upon bowls of rice, plates upon plates of pasta, whereas you probably cannot eat, you know, just more and more and more and more steak. When you eat steak, usually at a certain point, you're like, actually, I'm really full. Whereas with pasta and rice, obviously you get to a point where you're full, but you tend to eat way more, right? At least for me. So if you go low carb, not only is it healthy because it's low, um, low uh, sugar, it also helps you get lean in a more efficient way. And the reason you don't want you you, you want to go low carb in the first meal, or even no carb in the first meal, is so that in the evening you can enjoy carbs and then go to sleep. Like having a carb meal and then like sleeping and winding down is okay because carbs naturally make you kind of feel bloated and you want to chill, you want to relax. And that's what you do in the evening anyway, so that makes sense. But if you do it like at lunch, you know, before you have to start work again, then you feel like, oh God, I need a nap. Also think of it like this, when you eat, the reason fasting actually works really well is because when you eat, your logic tells you, okay, if I eat now, I'm going to be less hungry for the next three, four hours, five hours. Like at lunch, I'm going to be less hungry if I had breakfast before because there's food in my system. Whereas if I don't have breakfast, I'll be super hungry at lunch. There's some truth to that, but usually that's more your mind playing tricks on you. If you get used to fasting, you're not hungry at breakfast and your hunger at lunch is not more because you didn't have breakfast. If anything, it's the opposite, wherein the breakfast kind of activates your digestive system. It like wakes up your stomach. Your stomach's just woken up from sleep. It doesn't need food. It's just chilling. And then you put food in it, you, you give it a job, like eat. And then your stomach's like waking up, your internal organs are waking up trying to digest all the food. Not sure if I explained that very well, but 
Think of it like this. Your stomach gets activated if you start eating. Whereas if you don't eat, then it's just not activated. It's just chilling. And that little urge to eat, like it uh, in the morning, like, or when you like walk past the bakery, like you can't help that. But that little urge is, if you take one step back from it, it's usually trying to numb you. Like you're trying to numb yourself by eating. Like internally, you don't feel that great. You feel a little anxious, right? Maybe you screwed up the diet the day before or something and you wake up feeling a bit like uh, groggy and anxious and like, mm -hmm. and then you're kind of just thinking, oh, I just want a bit of food. You're not actually that hungry, but you just want a bit of food, right? The reason I know this is because I felt this exactly this morning. I woke up, I was not hungry. My body did not require food at all. As soon as I came out of my room, I thought, I want to eat a little something. And then I caught myself, I was like, why am I thinking this? Like, what's going on? And it's because internally I was feeling a little bit anxious. you got to be able to do these kinds of self-awareness and self-analysis. Like, instead of just going, like, like responding to that first impulse. Just like, oh, I kind of feel like eating. Boom. Eat. And what happens? Oh, feels good, tastes good. Whoa, eat more, more, more. Oh, feel shit. Feel tired. Coffee, I need coffee. Boom. Try to do some work. Oh, I feel really sleepy today. Oh, it's lunchtime. Lunch. Carb load, heavy. Nah. Coffee. Coffee crash. Dinner, drink, binge. Repeat. I just described my life for uh, quite a lot of my life, you know. I'm sure some of you can identify and it is not healthy. Instead, just don't eat breakfast, just fast. Fast as long as you can. Have water, have coffee. And here's a pro tip. Start, like, enjoying the hunger a little bit. Like... Modern society almost characterized hunger as like a really bad thing. But we evolved to sustain hunger. Hunger was probably a very, very common state of existence for us. Our body can deal with it. It's even healthy, probably, in a scientific sense, to feel hungry, to, you know, to fast. So your body's human growth hormone is activated. Your body starts, like, becoming sharper because the wisdom of the body is to like work to get food like you become more clear and sharp if you've done fast and properly you know what i'm talking about right you're lighter you're sharper you're more productive and then when you feel hungry you're like enjoy it enjoy that little feeling of hunger obviously not like starving yourself and you're like hangry and trying to have a go at everyone that's not good but just accept that feeling as like oh i'm hungry like be, become aware of the hungriness and then just be like, oh, I'm kind of hungry, but it's okay. Like, I kind of enjoy this feeling. Probably means I'm moving fast. Don't go into anxiety mode. Don't go into, um, something needs to be solved right now. Like, my hunger needs to be resolved. It doesn't need to be resolved. Bro, just chill. Appreciate it. You know, it's, it's good to feel hungry every now and then. You appreciate your food more as well. Diet, like life, is a lot a game of perspectives. And you must realize that you have choice over the perspectives that you choose. And they determine how you feel, which then determines how you act. How good is it? Mmm! Oh my god. Another huge top point. I think there's this thing, like, some people are like visual eaters, some people are like satiety feeling eaters, like, I don't know what you call them, but some people, and my mother's like this, as long as there's food visible on the table, she will keep eating. Whereas other people, when they feel full, they will stop eating. Which one are you? You, you might be a combination of both. I think I'm a bit of a combination of both, so... 
if you just keep having the food there even though you don't actually want to finish it or even though you, you you're technically all right with what you ate you'll just keep eating because it's there and we've been told like finish your plate you know in asia they say like oh like all the farmers and like all the like crops and then and all this like we have to be grateful for that and, and you know show respect to them pay homage homage and we have this mentality like finish your plate finish your plate right and this doesn't work well for like visual eaters and people that want to get lean because you, you you don't need that but you so a good thing to do is put the plate away from you so, so just stand up and go away from the food for a bit You'd be surprised how effective this is. Just cover the food or like put it to the side like I just did. Very, very helpful tip. You gotta stack these decks in your favor, whether it's the olive spray, putting away the food, not buying ice cream and leaving it in the freezer, buying a big water bottle so you drink more, wearing one of these Japanese Tamagotchi type things so that you walk more because you have a dedicated step counter, tracking your weight every day, having an accountability partner, working out, choosing a gym that you like all of these things add up and you stack the deck in your favor what? i was there all all the time my seaweed was covering the camera all the time but that's the point guys you gotta move distractions away away to streamline your way to to success on your weight journey i hope this helps please let me know if these kinds of videos help you and by the way I um I think people have have appreciated this so I want to make more of these things for you guys more often and also go into topics like that branch outside of fitness um, and I'll be talking about all kinds of stuff much more in an unfiltered way about like you know I don't know like confidence or like relationships or like YouTube or books or whatever um, and I'll do that on my second channel which will be uh, in the link below so you know help me make these videos better tell me what you want to see what questions you want me to talk about um and i'll be sure to get to them